Hello everybody, we're going to do a quick topic here today, side talk, that is the coronary arteries. So first of all, I, I'd like to tell you that coronary arteries are basically arteries supplying the heart and the structures related to it, that is the endocardium, pericardium, etc. The myocardium especially because the musculature is the most important part of any uh, muscle, that is the cardiac muscle. So yeah. Coronary arteries are arteries which arise from the ascending aorta, not the arch of aorta, not the descending thoracic or the abdominal aorta, but the ascending aorta. So the branches of the ascending aorta are the right and the left coronary arteries, which will actually supply the heart. So as we go specifically, there there are two coronary arteries. There is the right one and there is the left one. So we're gonna go over details right now. Okay, here we go. First, starting with the right coronary artery, we have I have here, I have a diagram here of the heart. You can see that this is the anterior, anterior view of the heart and this is the posterior view of the heart. So here let me quick review, this is the SVC, here will be the IVC, right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, left auricle, arch of aorta and this is the pulmonary trunk. This is the right and left pulmonary arteries. This is the right side, this is the left side and here this is the posterior view of the heart. Here we have this big thing that is the base of the heart. It is formed by the left atrium and the right atrium. This is the IVC and this is the SVC. This is the arch of aorta, this is the pulmonary trunk and this here, the, the part over here that is, this is called as the uh, right ventricle and this is the left ventricle and this is the apex of the heart. So this is the, so this is the apex of the heart. Okay, so what we can clearly see here is that there are two arteries basically arising the arrow indicated here these are the two arteries arising from the ascending aorta which are further dividing and supplying the heart so these are actually the coronary arteries first we're going to discuss about the right coronary artery so we have here the right coronary artery where does the right coronary artery arise from the right coronary artery actually arises from the anterior aortic sinus what are aortic sinus as if you imagine that this is the ascending aorta what happens is that there is a thing called aortic valve okay so which prevents the backflow of the blood from aorta into the left ventricle so what happens is that the valve has three cusps okay so there is the posterior cusp the right and the left cusp so the uh, right one will arise from the right cusp and the left one will arise from the posterior cusp so you can see here that if this is the aorta then this is the ascending part of aorta and then right one is arising from the right so it is called as the anterior cusp okay so the right coronary aris arises from the right anterior cusp of the ascending aorta the left one as you can see it is dotted that means it lies posterior to the structures labeled here so it is arising posterior so the left will arise from the posterior cusp of the aortic sinus so we got that now we can see here the details about the right coronary artery. The most important point to note about the coronary arteries is that uh, these arteries will supply the myocardium, the endocardium and the pericardium. But the most important thing is that they will supply the myocardium and they are the sole supply of the myocardium. There, there, are, there are a few anastomoses in normal people which are not regularly opened up. So if any of your coronary artery gets blocked or there is reduced blood supply, the myocardium, myocardium will get uh, hypoxic and it will undergo an infarct. So that is known as myocardial infarction which can uh, lead to death. So we need to know this, uh, we, need to, we need to know the information of the coronary arteries so that we can diagnose at which point there is the infarct and which artery has been occluded so that we can later stent it and open it. Okay, so right coronary artery finally starting the topic we have, uh, I'll divide it into anterior branches and posterior branches. Speaking of which, anterior branches of the right coronary artery, there are five branches you need to remember. First one, obviously the first artery will arise at the very start of this artery. So at the very start of this right coronary artery, we have this artery going like this. Do you see this artery? This artery converging towards the left, near the pulmonary trunk. This is known as the conus artery. What do you mean by conus? Conus is actually uh, an embryological name which represents the outflowing tracts. So here the outflowing tracts are aorta and the pulmonary trunk. So we have the right conus artery and can you see from the left coronary artery there is uh, another left conus artery coming and they are anastomosing right here to form a, this ring. So this is called as the ring or annulus of Vesalius. So this is annulus of Vesalius. So that was the first branch. First is the right conus branch of the right coronary artery. Then next is do you see this branch going posteriorly and it is supplying this orange color structure here. So let me tell you the branch which is going posteriorly that is known as the atrial branch as it is going towards the right atrium okay so this is the atrial branch and 
a branch from this atrial branch is coming and supplying this orange color structure here. So this orange color structure is nothing but the sinoatrial node. Okay, so sinoatrial node here, it is supplied by the right coronary artery. Always remember, in 60% of the population, the sinoatrial node will be supplied by the right coronary artery, whereas in the remaining 40% of the population, the sinoatrial node or the SA node will be supplied by the left coronary artery. But in this diagram, the SA node is supplied by the right coronary artery. So this is the 60% uh, heart of the people. Okay, then we can see that this artery is descending here. So what is this thing called? This is the partition between the atrium and the ventricle the right atrium and the right ventricle so this is known as a sulcus okay so this this is known as arterioventricular sulcus see so the right coronary artery will pass in the right arterioventricular sulcus it will descend almost directly vertically and as it is descending it will give out numerous branches which will supply the atrium and also the ventricle so which ventricle this is the right atrium it will supply and this is the right ventricle it will supply so we have we can see here that there is the atrial branches coming out the right atrial branches and the right ventricular branches so the right coronary artery will end up supplying the atrium the ventricle the sa node okay so now what happens is that it reaches the end the, the, the this is the end of the heart okay so as it reaches this this inferior margin so what happens is that we can turn our view to the posterior side so as this reaches here, it is continued like this. This was the inferior aspect, inferior uh, border of the heart. So it reaches backwards now, like this. A as you can see, as it is going backwards, it is running in the coronary sulcus. Again, sulcus means separation between the uh, atrium and the ventricle. So this is the atrial part and this is the ventricle part. And this is the basically the diaphragmatic view of the heart. Okay, so you're getting this base and this ventricles here. The coronary artery, right one, after giving all this, it will turn like this to give branches over here. So what are these branches here? Again, it will give the left, sorry, the right posterior ventricular branch, like it gave here, the right anterior ventricular branches, so there will be the right posterior ventricular branch. Do you see there is a small branch arising from this right coronary artery in the coronary sulcus? This, this small branch is actually rising at the crux of the heart. So this small branch, this is known as the branch which will supply the AV node. So as I mentioned that this is the SA node and this is the AV node. So this will be your AV node and again the AV node is also supplied by the right coronary artery. So always remember 60% of the SA node and all of the AV node, it is supplied by the right coronary artery. Okay, you got that. So right coronary artery will supply the AV node here. Now as you can see it is going here and there is this sign of anastomosis here. So we'll focus later on the anastomosis, but before anastomosing gives off a major branch like this, which almost appears like it's an own coronary artery. So this is the posterior interventricular artery. That means it is present between two ventricles posteriorly. Whereas if you can see here, this is the anterior interventricular artery. So remember for now that the posterior interventricular artery, it is a branch of your right, right sided. So, but this is not always, okay. In what happens in 90% of the people, the posterior interventricular artery, it is the branch of the right coronary artery. But in 10% of the people, this artery will actually arise from the left coronary artery. So that will be a left dominant heart and this is the right dominant heart. Do you understand my concept, man? Let's revise it quickly. This is the right coronary artery we are talking about. It arises from the anteriotic sinus. It gives the first branch that is a conus branch annulus of Vesalius then it gives the atrial branches which will also end up supplying the sinoatrial node then it will give the a uh, then it will give this descending branch which will give the ventricular and the atrial branches anteriorly and then as it is goes goes down this small branches these are known as the marginal branch or these are present in the margins of the heart okay so the marginal branches the ventricular the atrial and the nodal branch and the conus branch these are the five anterior branches focusing on the posterior aspect there is this posterior ventricular branch, there is this AV nodal branch and there is the posterior interventricular branch. Okay, so that was the supply of the right coronary artery. Speaking of that, what happens is that this coronary artery, the right one, as it is here, after giving this posterior interventricular artery, the right coronary artery ends up anastomosing 
with this is known as the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery so the right coronary artery will end up anastomosing with the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery the left coronary artery has two branches this is the left anterior descending lad artery which is also known as left anterior interventricular artery there is no need to say left anterior interventricular is always from the left so this is the anterior interventricular artery and then this is this is a circumflex branch it, as it is self, circumflexing around the cor coronary sinus so we can see here that the coronary arteries they make a circle around the arterioventricular groove so this is an important point okay speaking of the right coronary artery we need to know that what do these branches supply let let me list you out you can already clearly see it here it will supply the right atrium the right ventricle the sa node the av node and it will also supply the part of interventricular septum as this is the posterior interventricular artery so these five things you need to remember that these five things are supplied by the right coronary artery okay now talking about the left coronary artery first of all i'd like to tell you that the left coronary artery is bigger than the right coronary artery so the left coronary artery will have to supply the greater part of the myocardium there are two reasons why this is bigger first of all because there is the big musculature and second of all it gives a lot of branches okay there is a 3 to 1 ratio of the musculature that is the left ventricle is three times as much thick as the right ventricle in normal cases what happens is that okay this is the start uh, left coronary artery the left coronary artery as you can see it arises posteriorly so i have noted it in dotted form so it arises from the posterior aortic sinus so from the posterior aortic sinus this left coronary artery comes in front and as it comes in front between this left auricle and this left ventricle it divides into two parts it divides into, into a circumflex branch and the left anterior descending artery this anterior descending artery it is also known as anterior interventricular artery as it is present between the groove between the two ventricles okay so this is the circumflex branch and this is the anterior interventricular branch so it is already divided into two parts the right coronary artery did not do any such thing but the left one is divided so these are two basically separate arteries now we can consider that is this one it is the lad artery and this is the circumflex artery the left anterior descending artery or the left anterior interventricular artery what will it supply we can see here that it is supplying the ventricle this is the left ventricle and most of the interventricular septum so what happens is that here also we saw that the right coronary artery was supplying the posterior inferior one third of the interventricular septum this guy supplies the rest of the interventricular septum this one will supply entirety of the interatrial septum but this one will supply anterior two thirds of the interventricular septum and this guy will supply posterior inferior one third of the interventricular septum got that now we we see the circumflex artery the circumflex artery is coming here let me come on this side the circumflex artery is coming here from here like this this is the left side so from the left side the circumflex artery comes on the back side of the heart what happens is that this artery now gives this long long diagonal branches can you see these are diagonal so these are known as diagonal arteries okay and they also give the marginal arteries so there is the diagonal artery the marginal artery uh, here also we saw that there are marginal arteries because they are basically present in the margin of the heart so this is the diagonal artery and marginal artery some are diaphragmatic branches what are diaphragmatic branches the diaphragmatic surface of the heart it will receive and finally it will come over here and anastomose with this guy this is the last part of the right coronary artery do you get that i already told you that the first branch will be here there is the left conus artery so the left conus artery will anastomose with the right conus artery from the annulus of vesalius that is the ring of uh, the arteries present on, around the pulmonary trunk okay and yeah and talking about the left dominant hearts left dominant heart this posterior interventricular artery as well as the anterior interventricular artery both of them will arise from your left coronary artery got that it may sound confusing but if you really look to it it is not that hard the area supplied by the left coronary artery i can tell you that it is supplying the entirety of the left side of the heart that is the left atrium the left ventricle the anterior two thirds of the interventricular septum and posteriorly it is also giving branches to the diaphragmatic part and in 40% people it is giving branches to the sinoatrial node and also the remaining part that is the bundle of his and the remaining conductor system all of that is supplied by the left coronary artery
so that was all about the coronary arteries next lecture we're going to discuss about the veins of the heart the veins are pretty easy they all have you know let's not do it here okay thank you